All right, folks. So far, we have a website now. It's starting to look a little more like a web app. It's getting its tweets from the server. So let's try something interesting. Let's make another API route where we can add a tweet to the server. So I'll actually do the layout real quick. Um, I'm going to do another H3 before all these repeated ones. I'm going to do one more. Um, actually, not an H3. I'm going to say div class equals, uh, let's call it uh, new meow. Divs are, are generally useful for styling certain pieces of your website. So um, if I want to make like a block and style it a certain way, I just do div, put a class on it, and then style the class. I'll show you that in a second. And inside that div, we'll put an input box. Input type equals text. Um, that's pretty much it. I guess placeholder equals new meow. Or what are you meowing today, maybe? Equals what do you have to meow today? Okay. And then we'll style that. So let's save that real quick. Let's see how that looks on our website. Okay, so let's give that a style, new meow. And then our style, if you remember, is over in this file over here, style.css, new meow. Da, da, da. Um, let's do this. Um, I'm gonna copy how I do the tweets themselves, the meows themselves. I'm gonna give it a border and give it some padding. And um, can I do this with, I think I can do with 100%. That should make it the width of the column. Let me just put something, refresh. Okay, it's starting to look a little bit better. Um, oh, I forgot the button for actually uh, submitting it. So after that, I'm gonna put uh, button. In general, I do button type equals button. It's just useful for like random buttons. If you don't do type equals button, then like weird stuff happens with the website. It like starts auto selecting it and you can't really use it very well. And then slash button inside the button will say uh, submit. Um, we'll get to how to set that up in a second. Okay, getting better. Um, so we're using bootstrap if you remember and bootstrap comes with some stuff. So I can do input class equals uh, I think it's called input I'm not sure I think bootstrap comes with some stuff to make this look good nope that's not it oops bootstrap CSS input this is how I google how bootstrap does its stuff let's see forms form group Okay, I have to surround it in a form group, I think. A form control is the name of the class. Let's see how that looks. Copy. Um, oops. Form control, save that. Nope, not that page. Okay, better. And um, submit. I think it's the same one, class equals. Oh, no, no, it's, it's a BTN, I think. BTN. Let's see how that comes out. Oops. Save that. So I'm just styling here. Oops. Yeah, let me refresh this. Okay, it's a little bit better. Not the best style. I mean, this button should really be here on the right. I'm just not gonna go into styling too much. So, so how do we do this in Angular? Let's take a look at our Angular code. What we're gonna do is this thing called. Um, ng model so if you have an input box you can do some interesting things with angular you could just say like ng model equals new meow oops sorry ng model and without even touching the controller i could use this in the, in the website i could even put it like right here i could be like squigglies new meow this is what really got me into interested in Angular in the beginning. I'll show you why. 
Hello. You see that? As I type, it's updating that variable in the scope. That's scope dot uh, new new meow. It's just automatically all synced up. It's called two way binding. Um, so this input is two way bound. I can set this variable in, in the in the JavaScript new new meow, and it'll update what's in here. So it'll go both ways. If I type what's in here, it'll update the variable. If I change the variable, it'll update this in here. In fact, I can even demonstrate that. I can say inside my controller, I can say scope dot new meow equals hi hi. Save that. Refresh. See? That JavaScript variable set what's inside this input box. So it goes both ways. It sets the box and I can use the box to set the variable. Two way binding. Key right there. So let's get rid of that little thing we added. Then we don't need to display it because we already see it in the box. And um, by the way, you never really do that in real life. You never really have it just updating as you're typing. I mean, certain apps maybe, but in general, you probably don't have a use for that. But what you do need is ng model because you do need to associate this input box with a scope variable. And that's how you do it ng model equals new meow. It associates it with scope dot new meow. So now what? Say you have this scope variable, what do you do with the button? So let's say button ng click. That's it lets you define a function for when you click the button. Let's call it um, submit new meow. Just like that. Just call the function. Name of the function and the two parentheses to call it. So now what do you do? In the controller, you say scope dot Actually, let me first get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. Scope dot submit new meow. See, it automatically typed it because I already had it in the page. Equals function. And then that's it. It's a function. It does something. So when you click that button, it calls this function. So let's see what it does. Um, let's say console.log scope dot new meow simple enough right so what's going to happen when I press that button it's going to log it in the console what I typed so let me refresh this real quick hi, hi, hi. submit boom it logged it so now that you know the JavaScript is recording this let's um, let's get a little interesting here so let's submit this to the server so what we can do is, instead of logging it, let's submit it. Let's say http.post, which is kind of the opposite again. It's like you're sending data to the server, slash meows. Um, then like the payload, which is going to be new meow. This is JSON, by the way. It's like an object with a property. Um, scope dot new meow um, I think this is the right syntax so let's let's just double check HTTP let's take a look at the documentation so let's take a look at post okay yeah, it's URL which is slash meows and then data which is what we're sending so what you can do is dot then just like from before and then the callback function. And that's it. Maybe you can do like a alert, you know, like a JavaScript alert that's like success. That means it got submitted successfully. So let's see what happens. Um, what's going on here is HTTP.post. So what does this mean? Well, it's remember, it's the opposite of get. Get gets the data post sends the data. So on the server, you need something to receive the data. And I'll show you how to do that right now. What you do is app dot post the name of the route, which is still slash meows. You're allowed to use the same name if you're doing something different. Like I can't do app dot get slash meows. It would have to be something else because you don't want to overwrite this guy up here, but it's app dot post. So it's, it's different. Trust me on this one. Um, I'm going to copy paste this thing right here because I Type that like a million times. 
it's basically every single one of these routes has that function rec res next uh, rec contains like the request object which has all like the data that I'm sending like the new meow res is like res.send that can send some data back next you call next if there's like an error like a database error or something and we'll get into that later um, but basically let's just say console.log um, just to get a sense of what's going on rec.body um, so let's save this and let's open up our site Oops. I get confused here so here's our site let me refresh this um, let me get our server open so we can see what's going on let's try to say hello submit okay undefined it did not work rec.body why isn't that working rec. HTTP post let me just make sure I'm doing this right um, express post express JS oops I don't want FedEx or anything like that routing okay let's take a look app.post um, oh by the way you should always do a res.send just to make sure because if you don't put that the server will hang and you'll be in trouble let me restart the server real quick Yeah, the server will hang if you forget to send something back in the res because Express will get confused. But why isn't this working? Let's just try logging the entire request. Let me save that. Um, let me open the page. Okay, it says success. Okay, it says success that time. Let me see. Let me kind of look through this entire thing here. Request. I never remember where it saves this stuff. Request dot. Hmm. Let's just try dollar sign HTTP express JS post. Let's just see this whole system put together. There's probably a million examples of this. Um, rec dot body. And then HTTP. Where is? Oh, do I need this? Not sure. Um, Angular. Let me just see Angular here. Angular JS post. It's, you'll find examples of this kind of stuff. Um, dot form data um, dot body again this should work um, but we might need body parser it's actually another thing let me install that actually real quick um, that was control C by the way so let's do npm install body parser just from experience I know that you need this I wasn't sure if you really needed it, but uh, I guess you do, because this is not working. So then you could do this. I'll copy this code. Um, so you just just make another variable. Um, oops. Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry about that var body parser so once you have the body parser here how do you do it you do okay yeah this is what you need so stick that guy right there that's really all you need to know because this is this is json what's coming in is json so you need to automatically parse it otherwise it ain't gonna work this should work now though rec.body let me 
save that. Um, okay. Let's try this one more time. Okay, install the body parser. Let's run NodeMon with the server. Refresh. All good. Hi. Submit. There we go. Okay, now it's working. So now I can see my object that I sent to the server. <coughs> Just to recap, I'm doing HTTP.POST, the route I'm going to. The second argument to POST is an object. An object is like these two squiggly things with a property. And then for every property, there's a value. And the value is the, the actual text of the, the meow that I'm sending. So let's save this on the server now. So the way you do this is, so I, I can't save it to this array because this array is encapsulated by this function. So I really got to move this out. I got to go like this, X, control X, and then control V, bring that back with the uh, shift tab. And then instead of just logging it, I'm going to do meows dot push and then rec dot body dot new meow because if you remember when I logged rec dot body it said meow colon the text so if I do rec dot body dot new meow it'll just pick up the text it'll just get that value so I can push it and I can send it back just to say it's successful and that should be it so let's see if this works okay refresh the page good let's just say hello submit Okay, the pop-up says success. Okay, and now when I refresh this, it should show hello, because I just submitted it to the server. The server added it to its array, and there we go. Hello has been added. So isn't that cool? I'm adding this to the array on the server. So now my friend on the other side of the country can log on to the same server and see that tweet that I just made, that, that meow that got added to the server. But there's a slight problem here. And that is if the server gets restarted, and servers restart all the time, you can't expect them to be up forever. So if I do control C and restart the server, guess what happens? My meow that I submitted is gone. It's because the server didn't persist that data. And that's what we're gonna get into uh, in the next video. We're gonna show how to persist data using a database. That's what a database does, it saves data. And we're gonna use something called Mongo. Again, we're doing the mean stack here, so Mongo is the M, E is Express, A is Angular, N is Node. And that's that, so we'll get into that next.